Juan Tripp discovered his love of aviation at a young age. In 1909, he witnessed Wilbur Wright's awe-inspiring flight around the Statue of Liberty, a turning point in his aviation desires. Tripp went on to attend Yale University, where he established the university's first aviation club, the National Intercollegiate Flying Association. He desired to start his own airline, and in 1923, in conjunction with Long Island Airways of New York, he started his own company. Unfortunately, the company didn't last as long as he anticipated, and he soon found himself in another flight-based business. In 1924, he aided in the formation of Colonial Air Transport, where he served as the first managing director. With the decline of the company, Juan and his associates broke away and sought to form a new airline. While fully taking advantage of his connections to the wealthy and political elite, Pan Am received the first U.S. airmail contract in 1927. This contract involved flying mail by air from the U.S. to Cuba. Once this contract was set in stone, Tripp set out to gain more overseas business. Tripp and Pan Am gained enormous success when he convinced the most famous pilot in the world at that time, Charles Lindbergh, to work for him in 1928. The pair began to fly together, mapping and navigating new routes for the company to fly. Lindbergh would continue to work for Pan Am, advising the airline on its purchase of jet transports and eventually helping to design the Boeing 747. In 1928, Pan Am's success seemed to take off. Through heavy lobbying efforts by Tripp, the U.S. government selected the airline to be its chosen method of overseas operations. As Pan Am was one of the sole resources for the service at this time, they enjoyed a near monopoly for international flights. The airline relied heavily on their clipper ships to complete these routes. The clipper ship, or flying boat, was quite convenient in the early days of air travel due to the fact that they were able to land on water. With little navigation capabilities and few airports available at this time, it was more practical for plans to land on water. This allowed them to land in any city in lieu of an airport. Pan Am's flights would soon expand to serve much of South America, advancing the airline and the aviation industry in pioneering. The use of multi-engine land planes, onboard navigation, cabin attendance, multiple flight crews, weather reporting, connecting services for railways, and two-way radios all came to be with the expansion of Pan Am to South America. In 1934, Tripp made the bold statement that Pan Am would conquer the Pacific. Many thought that this was impossible due to the fact that there were few places to stop between the United States and China for the airliner to refuel. Tripp's proposition was brought to the attention of the U.S. Postmaster General. He proposed that if Pan Am found a way across the Pacific, it would be guaranteed all of the Post Service's airmail contracts to the Far East. To Tripp's amazement, the Roosevelt administration accepted his proposal, concluding that it was in the national interest to establish business in the Far East. In 1939, the Boeing 314 clipper ship began European service flying from New York to Lisbon, Spain. As World War II approached, passenger air travel began to decline. Pan Am managed to maintain their air travel on behalf of the war effort, transporting troops and supplies. The construction of new airfields around the world built for the war were converted to public use soon after. With the construction of these new airfields, the use of the clipper ship became unnecessary. This end of the clipper ship gave way for the coming of the jet age. In the early 1950s, many aircraft manufacturers were somewhat interested in building the newly popular passenger jets, arguing that the jet engine consumed too much fuel. Pan Am met its customer demands with planes such as the Lockheed Constellation and the Boeing Stratocruiser, both propeller-driven aircraft. It was argued that the large consumption of jet fuel was uneconomical for passenger flights. After convincing both Boeing and Douglas aircraft manufacturers to both begin producing jet engines for a new competitive market, Tripp came out on top. Both the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8 were added to Pan Am's fleet. Not only did these aircraft cut flight time in half, newfound comfort and smooth flights were present for passengers. Tripp was also the first to introduce a tourist class fare, cutting a normal airline fee in half. While the introduction of these jet aircraft proved successful for both Pan Am and the aviation industry alike, the airline was met with hapless events involving the new aircraft. During the early 1960s and 1970s, Pan Am was involved in 10 major accidents and hijackings. New safety equipment and regulations were added to the aircraft after learning from the mistakes. In the coming years, Juan Tripp began to anticipate an increase in air travel, feeling the need to develop high-capacity, long-haul aircraft. Tripp brought his idea to Boeing, and the 747 jumbo jet was born. This project was a financial gamble for both Boeing and Pan Am. Soon after introducing the 747, competing airlines felt the need to catch up, creating high demand for the aircraft. The financial struggle of the airline was followed by difficulties with the U.S. government. Its monopolistic practices concerning their international routes became unpopular, which granted their routes to competing airlines. 
1978, when all airlines were deregulated, Pan Am jumped at the opportunity to purchase national airlines. They hoped to establish a domestic market to make up for their international losses. Unfortunately for Pan Am, the integration of the two airlines was unsuccessful, forcing the airline to liquidate their assets just to keep their heads above water. Pan Am began to sell off parts of their company, selling their Pacific routes to United Airlines in 1985 and their Atlantic routes soon after. In 1991, Pan American World Airlines ceased all operations. Pan American Airways was the largest air carrier in the United States. Its innovations in the airline industry shaped aviation forever. It was a launching point for aircraft that would set the standard for all that were to come. Without Pan Am, the world and the way we see air travel today would be much different.